Good morning, a very warm welcome to this online service for Trinity Sunday. A uh, particular welcome again if you're uh, tuning in for the first time or if you consider yourself uh, not part of the church community but you're uh, just curious. You're all very welcome. We're going to begin our service with the prayer for today. So almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue in prayer. O King, enthroned on high, <clears throat> filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name. Lord God Almighty, in our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> so let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. Today's reading is from Isaiah 40, 28-31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. 
Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Good morning. I was delighted when I saw that the Isaiah 40 passage that Linda read was one of the readings for today. I think the vast majority of Christians are encouraged by these words, which is probably why they appear on so many wall plaques and posters, paintings, desk sculptures, you name it, anything that's sold by Christian bookshops. I don't know if anyone's ever tried to compile a top 10 of Bible verses that are loved by Christians, but if they did, I'm sure that John 3.16 would be number one. And this passage from Isaiah would be somewhere in the top five. It's a message designed to lift and encourage us. There are difficulties in this life that can overwhelm even the strongest people. This worldwide pandemic has seen the generation of fear, the like of which has probably not been seen since World War II. With the difference being that back in the war, people clung to one another for support and encouragement. Back then, even people who were not regular churchgoers would go to church to relieve their fears. But today's situation is unprecedented insofar as places of worship have all been closed for many weeks now. Fear that is left unchecked quickly becomes hopelessness that gnaws at even the most self-reliant, outgoing and dynamic personalities. Even before we knew what a pandemic was, There have always been circumstances in life that can be too big for us to handle. Everyone, even the young and strong, can grow faint and weary. They stumble and fall because they rely on their own inner strength, their own resources, which aren't sufficient to shield them from the storms of life. I was 26 when I discovered this truth, that my inner strength and resources were not sufficient to keep me from going under in the storms of life. But it can happen to you at any age. Only power that is come above is sufficient to sustain and strengthen us. Only Father God's protective hand can shelter us from the storms of life. Isaiah gave Israel repeated warnings of approaching punishment. He said if they did not repent for their evil ways, awful things were going to happen to them but they wouldn't listen. Even so, the Lord is a God of comfort and grace. He gave Isaiah this message for us to encourage us and to stop us from looking to inward strength and external evidences, and instead to look to him in times of need. He is the everlasting God. He is the creator of the whole world. He never gets tired or weary, he never slumbers or sleeps, and he understands everything. He is the one who gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. And the key to accessing this strength and power is given in verse 31, when it says that only those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They are the ones who will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31 is translated in a number of different ways in different translations of the Old Testament. Sometimes it's those who hope in the Lord or those who are expecting God, those who wait for the Lord, and those who trust in the Lord. The Hebrew word itself that is translated as hope or wait or trust is korvor which means to bind together, perhaps by twisting. When I read that it could mean that those who bind together with the Lord will renew their strength, it reminded me of Jesus saying that we should put on his yoke to consciously fasten ourselves to him in such a way that where he goes, we go. When we're yoked to Jesus, he does all the heavy lifting as long as we remain fastened to him. Jesus said that his father was greater than he was and that he and the father were so in tune 
that they moved as one. Jesus only said and only did the things that the Father said and did. And he said that when we, his followers, had that same relationship with him, it would be as if we were in him. He went on to say that he was in the Father and the Father would be in us and we would all be so entangled together that we would be inseparable. We would all be bound together or twisted together in such a way that it would be natural for us to always be doing the same thing that we saw our Father doing. Jesus was so used to this situation that he declared, I and the Father are one. When we truly identify with Jesus and trust in his help alone for our journey through life, then God's strength will be made perfect in our weaknesses. It is then that the wind of God will lift us up on eagles' wings and carry us through life's stresses and strains in the power of his Holy Spirit. Throughout the Bible, the same message is given in many different forms. We're told to live by faith and not by our senses, to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and not to rely on our own understanding. So when we admit our weaknesses and inabilities and we confess that without him we can do nothing of value, we will be enabled to draw from the bottomless well of his everlasting supply and to drink deeply from the living waters of our loving Heavenly Father's superabundant provision. When the marauding armies of Pharaoh were charging towards the children of Israel, hell-bent on annihilating them, Moses simply declared to the terrified Israelites, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. In such circumstances, standing still is not inactivity or doing nothing. Standing still can be a posture of hope because it involves keeping your hope anchored on the person of Jesus and having a sure and confident expectation of good. He will never leave you or forsake you. And as you centre yourself, your thoughts, your beliefs and your hopes on him, he will lead you concerning what to do, just as he led Moses and the Israelites out of a situation that their senses told them was hopeless. When you find yourself in a hopeless situation, learn to see yourself bound together with the Lord, yoked to him. It is then that your spiritual battery will be regenerated and renewed by Jesus Christ's limitless power and you will be able to run in his strength. Let us pray. Loving Father, we know that our strength can only be found in Christ. Help us to trust implicitly in the power that only Jesus can give. We ask that you lift us above all the difficulties of life and strengthen us to run with patience and endurance the race that is set before us, with our eyes fixed on Jesus, who is our only source of strength and refreshment. Amen. We say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. 
Strengthen Donald and John, our bishops, and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Have a few moments to name those you know to the Lord. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. So we continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy path throughout. Then sings my soul, I say the God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul.
for joining us this morning. Do keep in touch with us using the emails at the end of the service. So may the Father from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.